can be sensed, that can be seen or visualized, none of us know that it exists, but it prevails is intellectual poverty. So what makes us intellectually poor? It is when we have an innovative idea but no one to encourage, provide resources, capital and the framework to execute. So in this situation, what decision can we take? We tend to find a place where we can get most of these or create opportunity with all limitations and develop the country's economy. The easy option is to move out to another country and this whole scenario is termed as brain drain. This is brain drain to a nation but gain to an individual. So now let's think is the individual's gain more important or the nation's worry about losing its talent. In order to find an answer to this, I conducted a survey. Interestingly, most participants thought that the country's worry is more important than the individual's gain, even though they are all mostly part of a brain drain. This survey has been conducted among people of the earlier generation, the generation where everything that we enjoy today was still under development or had not yet been invented. But we still complain of lack of resources even now. So now let's understand what is their definition of lack of resources, starting off with one of the most basic need, education. Many address their issues of transportation wherein they had to travel long distances to go to school. Medium of education was a major problem. Availability of textbooks wherein they had to borrow them or stand in long queues to buy them. Continuation of education for girl child and finally graduating to higher education. Even though we have evolved from this phase, we still face issues of lack of opportunity and innovation. So let's look back in time and understand the history of brain drain. In 1990s, when booming Silicon Valley was a land of a million opportunities to, the, uh, to most of the talented young Indian engineers educated from IITs and NITs, brain drain still occurred. And this was because of a lack of demand for talented people. Complex policies uh, of taxation, imports in forex, low salaries, lifestyles, and lack of research-oriented higher education possibilities. Now, this has resulted in many problems to the country because of a shortage of important and skilled workers, loss of potential future entrepreneurs, and loss in the country's tax revenue and GDP. A book by Nandan Neelkhani, Imagining India, gave us a better understanding of this problem. According to the book, one in five IIT graduates left India during this period, and only 2,000 students were the intake of IITs in those days. It was almost as if they were too good for India's newly liberalized economy or there were no awesome jobs or remuneration for their intellectuality. With all of this information, you all might be thinking that brain drain is a huge problem. But we are looking at this in one perspective, which is the parent country's worry at that point. So now let us look at this in the individual gain perspective. Young Indians who went abroad as undergrads turned out to be super successful in their adopted countries. Take for example, Vinod Kosla, founder of Sun Microsystems, Satya Nadala, CEO of Microsoft, Kalpana Chawla, who became the first Indian woman in space, and Indira Nui, the CEO of PepsiCo. All these people have proved helpful for the economy of their adopted countries. But what they have also done is bringing in progress to India. And this was possible because of their success, whether it was setting up manufacturing centers, increasing skilled employment, setting up research units by MNCs, financial uh, institutions, etc. It was all possible because of them moving out to different countries and showing their talent. So now, Brain drain has actually helped India to develop. More and more Indian doctors and engineers and technicians flew to US, Europe and Middle East. No matter what the job was, Indians perfected them all. 
it wasn't just the techies making the wave it uh, indians um, also helped make uh, the bice many urban wonders hundreds of uh, indian laborers uh, were employed in the constant uh, construction of the bice metro and the picturesque palm island by contrary to our fears these expats never forgot their indianness their love for india lived in their adoration of bollywood and indian food and our eyes actually helped bring the indianness to people of their adopted countries where they were all, uh, already looked upon as a hard working and a successful bunch they became the brand ambassadors of india and its heritage suddenly people all over the world were like hey those indians are pretty smart and their food tastes really good their culture is wonderful the initial burst of uh, indians in silicon valley made the tech giants want some more of these sweet indian tech skills so they set up uh, centers in bangalore hyderabad and pune forming tech hubs which have since also become centers of innovation so we now made intellectual poverty into intellectual property intellectual property is built on the foundation of purpose culture and talented employability intellectual property helps in creating next generation oriented innovation to the uh, to connect the uh, world to be a better place for everyone most of these non resident tech wizards themselves are on their way back they are powering startups as ceos coos ctos and cfos to make our life so much more convenient those still abroad sent back 70 dollars 70 billion dollars to india last year in just foreign exchange it also opened up for um, other nationals to work in india and learn about remote working building um, global virtual teams and improving relationships with people across approximately over 1 million foreigners work in india in various sectors driving innovation and research along with local talent brain drain is a cyclic process talented people should move out to different countries to develop both nations it shall always be seen in two perspectives the first being a person leaving the country to accomplish their personal aspiration the second being the development of the parent country so let's just take a few moments to consider that indians are said to be even politically more influential now there was a widespread news that the american indian lobby in the us senate was the key to the passing of indo us civil nuclear deal raghuram rajan an other well known intellectual and an economist worked in the imf and has served india as rbi governor rishi sunak a british uh, politician is a second generation brain drain who has worked uh, who has been working on uh, making the policies for people much more flexible during the pandemic so it's not really a brain drain anymore it's more like a brain game each time an indian accomplishes something great it's more like one more point for indian awesomeness in the coming years these people will help bring india closer to the world they are not just part of an awesomely immense talent pool who knows we may brain drain uh, to another planet soon uh, to work wonders do we call this brain drain or brain gain the dare that can that can't be sensed that can't be seen or visualized none of us know that it exists but it prevails is intellectual property thank you